I've lost a lot of friends to suicide. Um, and then I see, I see these issues going on in our country today and these unanswered questions that our veterans are going through. Was it worth it? You know, what was it for? And all this other stuff. And the underlining demon with all of this, whether you're military or first responder or whatever, or someone who COVID has just beat you down is mental health. After I lost my buddy to suicide, I definitely started to think like, well, I could have easily have been one of the 22 a day myself because I had a mental um, point in my life when I was like, maybe it's better if I'm not here. You, you don't really overcome it, but I was able to understand it to where I can make myself a better man. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand is you'll see people and they'll, they'll have this problem that happened to them. The fact of the matter is, is you can never undo the past. It will mm -hmm. always be there. You can never make something not happen. It will always be a part of you. What we don't focus on enough is how can I, how do I adapt my life? How do I make myself better for this situation that I'm having a lot of issues overcoming right now? That's what we don't focus a lot on. A lot of people, they just want to forget about it. Yeah, like it never even happened. And a lot of those techniques are through drinking, mm -hmm. um, through drugs, and a bunch of different outlets that are temporary because this happened. How do you quit blaming, as in my case, blaming everybody for, for you, you know, mm -hmm. for your past? When in fact, guess what? <laughs> You're not the first guy to ever have a hard past. You won't be the last guy. And, um, you're not like you are such an entitled asshole right now that you think that other people need to worry about what happened to you. Get over yourself. Understand that, yes, it was bad what happened to you, but bad shit happens all the time. You are not so important to where everyone needs to know, you know, mm -hmm. and how about you get over yourself and you start to use and this is this is what I'm trying to do now is you start to use these situations to maybe help people because as you help people, you better yourself. You know, you don't better yourself because oh, I'm going to go do this and that's going to make me a better man. Not for me. Some people may, but I am starting to figure out that by helping people, it helps me if it uh, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people that will say that the, the best way to impact other people mm -hmm. is is to start with yourself and be just, just a positive influence, an example of what, what is possible. Yep. Right? And the best way to impact people is because you've been there. Yep. You can't talk to a guy that hasn't been there. It's like, well, no, no, no. I've never, I've never thought of suicide before, but I can tell you how not to think of it. Like, man, no, get away from me, dude. Let me talk to somebody who, ha who, who he's, been, he, he's been in the dungeon. He's, he, he's been to that point to where he's like, you know what? This is actually an option. That's a very dangerous point to be at because I've been there, mm -hmm. you know, and it's now how do we not get to that point? Yeah, life is hard. It is. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. But guess what? No one said it's going to be easy. And in part of my stance about it, it's understanding the minute you understand that you don't deserve shit. Nobody owes you shit. You're not entitled to anything. Life is hard and sometimes ugly and sometimes very brutal. And guess what? Just because you overcame this doesn't mean you're not going to get hit, hit with something ever again. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, life still doesn't owe you anything. Work for it. The minute you understand that, the minute you can adapt that life can be ugly and it's going to chew you up and nobody cares. Mm -hmm. That's when life starts to become beautiful. That's when you can actually really start to live and help people is when you understand that nothing is free. And guess what? Whether you like it or not, no one cares. And I tell this to veterans a lot um, because they're like, oh, you don't understand what I've been through or you weren't there or, or I, I, I defended your freedom so you can do name whatever you, you hear. I, I hate it. I hate it when people go down that rabbit hole because you are alienating everybody around you. They want to say, you know, oh man, you don't understand. Thank you for your service. And they probably really mean it. But if you're not doing one of the three F's, if you're not feeding someone, financing someone or fucking somebody, then you aren't, you're not a life sustaining thing for them. So they may truly mean thank you for your service or thank you for what you've done. But if you're not doing one of those three F's, they still got to take care of their family. They still got to do life sustaining functions. 
You have to. It's life. And if you aren't providing one of those, then guess what? Thank you for what you've done, but I got to get back to my life. I have to. And veterans, there's there's a some people just don't understand that. They it's in and some veterans are having issues with understanding that, hey, look, man, people will thank you and they probably truly mean it. But you're not owed shit, dude. Just because you did this and because you think that you've done something so extravagant that everybody owes you something, you're not owed a thing. You're not. That was a choice you made. Nobody owes you anything. And because these bad things happen to you, guess what? Bad shit happens in life and is going to continue happening. Get over yourself. And that's, and that's what I try and really like push off on veterans because that's mm-hmm. what it took for me to climb out of the 22 a day. I imagine when a lot of people hear this sort of thing, it's like, you're not owed anything. And, and mm-hmm. to the ones that do have, you know, any kind of, you know, mindset of being a victim or any entitlement, yeah. they, they don't, they probably don't like to hear that. Right. No. And, and ironically, you're not telling them this to offend them, or to, nope. you know, to hurt them or anything like that. You're actually trying to put them on the path to actually, you know, you know moving forward. Well, and not just that, but if you look at our country today, um, we have a victimization entitlement catastrophe going on. I don't know how else to say it. We have we are bringing up a youth in our country that is either victimized or entitled to something because they feel like they deserve something. And I see it in veterans too: the victimization mindset, the entitlement mindset. Well, I went through all this victim in. You're, vi- you're a victim to what you think you went through and you owe me this. Now you're entitled, but then you're going to go and you're going to bash the people that you're like, Oh, well, why are they out there doing that? You mean the same thing you're doing, but you're using the cloak of military to make your campaign, right. But their campaign wrong is like victimize or victimization and entitlement is dangerous. And it is plaguing our country today. <laughs> really mm-hmm. bad because everybody thinks they're owed something for free and life is supposed to be easy. How do you, how do you see this, this playing out, right? Are there, are there points where, you know, people want to have a sense of, you know, accountability, right? They'll, they'll make the argument and say, Hey, I just want accountability. I want something recognized. I want to bring about this change. Mm-hmm. And then, but there's a big difference between that and, and a mindset of entitlement. Mm-hmm. And there, there is, there, there is a way about, there is a way to go about change that I agree with. I do agree that there are changes that need to be made. There is also a way of doing it. When you throw a temper tantrum because you don't feel that you're getting your way instead of putting in the hard work to get your way or to get the changes that you want to enact, then you're being an entitled victimized asshole because that temper tantrum, I'm going to burn down Portland, Oregon because I don't agree with Whatever. And I say Oregon because I'm from Oregon. But there is a way to go about change. And it's not easy. And it's hard work. Because that's life. Mm -hmm. Life is hard work. And there are changes that need to be made, but it's hard work. 